Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we're gonna work with an orchid I'm very, very excited for. This is a Mule Year on Cidium. Some of you might remember I did have a Mule Year on Cidium in my collection, which I sadly lost. I'll link it down below. I actually made even a care tips video on that orchid. It went so well. But come summertime, everything fell apart. And yes, indeed, just like the other, let's say on stadium types, this one did not like the dryness of the semi-hydro setups and the Leka. So now I have a second chance at a newly run stadium. This time we're gonna do it right. I'm gonna talk a little bit about it in my experience with the sore kit and go through a full repotting of the sore kit. So with that said, let's start. Now, overall, I don't find these orchids finicky or hard to maintain in any way. I do, however, think they do require a lot of moisture. And if you don't have the proper medium or setup for it that work in synergy with your environment and lifestyle, things can end in disaster. And that's what happened to my uh, Mueller on Cidium. This one is what that one was supposed to be. If you remember, that one was mislabeled, nothing new under the sun, but it was supposed to be this one, Oncidium marine cross with hematochelium. Now, this orchid is not Oncidium anymore. It has been reclassified. It has a class of its own. It is Trichocentrum now, very similar to what happened to the Tulumnias. Those ones used to be Oncidiums as well, but nowadays they're Tulumnias. So the tag is a little out of date there, but it's okay. And what sets it apart from other, let's say, Oncidiums, and why we call it the Mueller Oncidium is the shape of the leaves. Can you see? They actually resemble a mule's ear. If you have a little bit of imagination, practically, they are very fleshy, very stiff leaves, which are pretty broad and pretty long. And the pseudobulb itself is something very, 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 very tiny. You can barely see it. It's buried underneath these sheets. Very similar to the Cycopsis, which used to be an Oncidium as well. So everything used to be an Oncidium at some point, I guess. But that one got a class of its own as well. Um, I'm not entirely sure if all of these can actually be crossed together. If they're compatible in that way, I just don't think I ever came across with any of the hybrids. So that's a little view on the circuit. You have more details in the description below. I'll add some links. With that said though, it is time to repot because Look at this orchid. It is potted in chunky bark. So I know that this orchid will be a headache to water in my environment in summertime. So we're gonna prepare a mix of bark and sphagnum moss, maybe a little perlite. But first we need to completely water and soak the medium and the root system to make it more flexible and just to make sure that the medium gets removed a lot faster from the roots. Now, typically with dehydrated orchids, no matter the species or variety, I like to water them one day before repotting. In this way, I make sure the orchid gets a little hydration before going through the stress of repotting. However, this technique only works if the orchid has viable roots, which are capable of absorbing water. If the reason for dehydration is lack of roots, obviously this step is really not needed because the orchid will not absorb anything. This orchid, on the other hand, was not dehydrated. I have it for a few days already and I already watered it the other days. So that's why I'm watering it now. But just so you know, if you do have a very dehydrated orchid that you just purchased, don't repot it right away. Give it a good watering and let it be for another day or even two before you repot it. If there's no hurry, it will actually make a difference in the overall health of the orchid after repotting. So again, just like with any other repotting, we are going to squeeze a little bit on the pot. It appears the orchid is not actually glued to the pot. And there we have it. We have a dead root and on the orchid I do see a few more dead roots. But overall, I think the orchid looks quite okay. Now, it's pretty hard to maneuver this orchid being that it has no pseudobulb and usually you don't want to keep orchids by their leaves. Typically, this is the most sensitive part, but in this case, the pseudobulb is almost inexistent and the leaves are very sturdy, very stiff. So it's okay if I keep it like this, but definitely I'm not going to grab only one leaf. I'm going to try and grab multiple leaves so that I support the entire weight of the orchid. Now I'm just going to massage the root system a little bit. That sounds funny. So at this point, I will dump out all of this old medium, rinse the root system at the sink, and come back to cut away the dead roots. 
Alrighty, so now I will just inspect the root system and cut away everything that's dead, everything that is dried, mushy, has no substance anymore, will be cut away. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera and come back when I'm done. Okay, so here's an interesting development. As I was cleaning away the root system, and by the way, there's quite a lot to be cleaned on this orchid, I noticed that sometime in its past, this orchid had an issue with some of its pseudobulbs and somebody had to cut them away. This portion of the stem is bare and it's also not looking very well. It's exactly where most of the not so good looking roots are. So what I will do is separate the circuit into two clumps and I will be potting it together. So what we will do is a division and I will eliminate this portion of the stem which is just not looking good and is a reason or a potential reason for further infection. Also, it's just awkward to place this orchid in a pot. So the best thing to do in this situation is to cut the rhizome. So I'll tell you where I will make the cuts. First of all, let's take a look at the main growth chain. Let's put it like that. New growth here, mother bulb, grandmother bulb. <laughs> and then this bare rhizome. And here we have mother bulb and new growth almost maturing here. So what we will do is cut right here and then right here. First of all, let's make this cut. So I will go really behind the pseudobulb, being that this orchid doesn't have visible pseudobulbs, I shall not be cutting it here. I will go as far as possible, better to adjust it afterwards. So I will be going right here. Oh, this is a thick rhizome. Let's see what we did though. Okay, it's not enough. All right, I think this is enough. And there we have it. This is our first clump. We're gonna see if we need to cut more afterwards. And here we go, this is the second clump. Can you see how bad this part of the rhizome looks like? There was really no point in keeping it. Oh, look at that, it's already gone. No point in keeping this part of the orchid, it's just a playground for bacteria. So I'm going to cut it away again, making sure that I don't go into the new pseudobulb. Better to leave more of the rhizome than to go too close to the pseudobulb, actually. And as we can see here, I think we are pretty close to the pseudobulb. We still have a bit of rhizome, but it's not decaying. So maybe I will leave this part as it is. And this part right here looks good too. All I need to do is just clean away, add a few dead roots and debris. And I think we're pretty much done with it. And here are our two divisions. For the bigger one, I did actually manage to go very, very close to the pseudobulb, as you can see here, and I eliminated all of the dead rhizome, but for the tiny one, I prefer to let a little bit of the older and a little bit affected rhizome. It's not completely affected. We have some green here because this portion of the rhizome actually has some roots. If I would remove this part, do you see? I would remove this root as well. And I think this part is still okay. On this side, I only have one, let's say, pseudobulb instead of three. Yes, I do have a new growth as well, but it's still not completely mature. So I think if I leave it like this, it will be best. And now before we go ahead and pot these orchids, it's time for hydrogen peroxide. I am going to eliminate the possibility of snails and snail eggs, but also if there are any fungal spores, they will just be eliminated now. So. I'm going to spray the root system and in between the pseudobulbs and the base of the pseudobulbs and I'll be back when I'm done. Okay, so one thing that I did was to merge the two plants just so they take less space in the pot. So this really tiny one, I tried to position as close to the bigger plant as possible so that they actually seem like one and also the root system of each plant doesn't really hinder the other plant. And I think this looks pretty neat. I'm going to go for a standard uh, 13 centimeter pot. That would be about five inches, maybe five and a half. And my medium of choice will be a mixture between bark and sphagnum moss. So as you know, I like to start out with a layer of sphagnum moss at the bottom. If I ever have a pool of water on the bottom of my pot, the moss will just suck it up. 
So I will arrange this orchid so that I leave space for the new growths. With this one, it's gonna be a little bit complicated. I will try to train it to grow on this side of the pot, but I think this is the best that I can do. This new growth will have a lot of space here to develop and for future growths as well. And this is a very awkward, at this point I'm hugging the camera. So let's just go ahead and mix sphagnum with bark directly into this pot. And here is our little orchid all done. She looks so much better, doesn't she? I think this rearrangement turned out really, really good. In the end, I decided to center a little bit this part as well because I will try to promote growth on this side by positioning the light source here. But in the end, it's not Play-Doh, it's a live thing and it will do what it pleases. So I'm gonna do my best, but in case it starts growing here, well, it will have space here as well. So I have equal space on both sides and I think that's the best I can do. Now, speaking about the rhizome having roots, you can absolutely keep the rhizome without the pseudobulbs. And I do have another case to show you. So here is a Calia orchid which I purchased last year and shortly after I noticed that it had a really serious infection which destroyed most of its pseudobulbs. And what I was left with was a new growth. It wasn't even mature yet. So because the pseudobulbs were affected but the rhizome didn't actually look affected, I decided to just cut the pseudobulbs and leave the rhizome alone. And as you can see, all of this little chain, it's completely intact. I left it there because it had roots and this was an immature growth which needed support. So the roots from the rhizome actually helped it and fed it. If I would have just cut the new growth, I would have doomed it. There was absolutely no way that low growth would find some energy somewhere in the air to grow. I'll link it down below to the video. This is a super interesting case and it taught me a lot, but here's an update for those of you who remember. Look at her, <laughs> this growth matured it didn't even suffer dehydration. Just a little setback because yes, the older pseudobulbs do store water, but also nutrients. So from the point of view of nutrients, it maybe had a little less than normal, but she's pulling through. And look at this new growth. It's not incredibly tiny. It's quite decent considering. So do check the video down below. You can definitely save orchids with one immature growth as long as you have the rhizome and the roots. As for the little newly around cidium, I will place it in this decorative pot, which is red and fiery, just like its flowers are supposed to be. And I think that's about it. Uh, my grow space is a mess, as it always is after repottings, but I hope this was useful for you. And you know the drill, like or dislike this video below, subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos, tutorials, Q&As and other fun orchid subjects. And if you'd like to support the channel, do consider visiting the merch store, you have links down below in the description. And with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!